Hey everybody, this is Nikki and I am here to do a video that's personal theory, personal thought, personal uh, experience, no medical advice whatsoever. And I'm finishing up a series of videos on a couple of phone calls into tandem about basal IQ and control IQ and setting changes. Um, I have gotten through everything. I'm at the last one and um, we I have covered everything from basics on basal IQ and control IQ to um, control IQ parameters to how it how how it determines the need to suspend insulin to changing settings um, for instance the correction factor and kind of what what you can expect if you do those things um, and now and about setting changes in general and now the last one which is pretty pretty simple is um, control IQ boluses um, Okay, so over the three over the three phone calls, boluses came up because we were again talking about settings changes, and so you can't talk about settings changes without talking about the kinds of boluses because different settings are going to affect different boluses. So, for instance, your carb ratio is going to affect what you get in a food bolus, um, whereas a your correction factor will affect what you get from a correction bolus, either the manual or uh, auto boluses. Okay, so there are three types of boluses in Control IQ, all accessible through the bolus um, screen, all, all accessible through bolus on the home screen. Um, okay, the first type of bolus, the standard bolus, is located on the initial bolus screen and is performed by inputting the desired unit amount at the top. This is where the user can just request a certain amount of units without entering or using any other information. Okay, so I will show you this, okay. Um, so here we have, that's the bolus. Okay. Um, yes, see, it wants to give me a correction. Oh, no, it doesn't. Okay. Um, all right, here is my bolus screen. What they're saying is if I go right up to the top and I just hit on, just hit units, I can go ahead and dial up any bolus I want, you know, outside of 100 units or, you know, whatever the limit is. But if I want to just do a straight bolus where I'm not giving any, I'm not considering any other information, I just want three units or something of the sort, I would go into that top button and hit units. Um, okay, the next type of bolus is the correction bolus. The bolus screen will have the CGM value pre-populated. So you can see there's my CGM value pre-populated, 185, uh, which is not impressive. Okay, um, but the user also has the option to input a current BG instead. So what they're saying is that, let's say, for instance, I'm on a, I have a rising blood sugar right now, and that value really is a 240. I could either do my bolus straight like this and see if it will give me a correction, or I could enter a new one. I could enter my actual blood sugar, and it still doesn't want to give me a correction because I have 85 units on board because of the 85 <laughs> grams of carbs I ate. Um, okay, so what they're saying here is that 185 and even 240 is not outside of what would be covered by my carb ratio. Um, okay, so those are, so that's the correction bolus. If using a current BG, the bolus will be calculated based on your BG and your correction factor. If using the pre-populated CGM value, the bolus will incorporate the CGM trends as well adjusting the bolus according to the rate of rise or fall. Um, I don't know who cares about that. I know I'm very, very interested in those kind of things. And I will tell you that I've learned now being in three different algorithms that um, the 670G, you don't have, there is no way to override. Whatever it gives you, it gives you. Um, with this, you have the option to, to, you know, to override in a couple of different capacities. Um, but that piece about what it's using, if I, if I choose to enter a BG, it is going to bolus using my correction factor and my BG. So it's gonna give me what I'm, I'm owed for those two things. But if I use my CGM, that pre-populated value, that 185, then it's going to use my CGM value, my correction factor, and the, the CGM trends. So I remember watching this on the Omnipod. I remember thinking it was really quite interesting because I always assumed an updated BG was the best option for a correction bolus. And it turned out that sometimes your CGM trends are more significant than the difference in BG. Um, so for instance, if my 
um, pre-populated CGM value was a 185, and let's say my actual blood sugar was a 210, like maybe it would give me 0.35 extra units for it being a 210. But had I gone with 185, let's say I'm rising really fast and somewhere back behind the, the scenes, it's, it's showing that I have a fast rising blood sugar. It might want to give me 1.35 extra units because of how fast I'm rising. Um, but really the only way to do it is kind of with control IQ, just put in the different boluses and see what it, see what it wants to give you. I could have said that. <laughs> but it's, okay. Um, so interesting to me. All right. The third type of bolus, sorry, the second type of bolus is a correction. We did that. Okay. The third type of bolus, the food bolus uses only the carb ratio. A changing blood sugar will not affect the bolus amount. This is interesting. Um, Again, control, I mean, uh, auto mode 670G used to, if I put in 50 grams of carbs and my blood sugar were a 50 and falling, if I am not mistaken, it would deduct from my food bolus. So it would deduct from what I was trying to give myself for my carbs. Um, this is not the way food boluses work in control IQ. Again, you can override and you can do whatever you want to do with it. But the way it works on its own is that it does not use your actual blood sugar or your predicted value or your CGM value. It doesn't use any of it. Um, it gives you the carbs you're due. The only thing it does take into consideration is your IOB. Um, so if I go to give myself a food bolus and I have a fast rising blood sugar, and let's say I'm, I'm bolusing 50 grams of carbs, it's gonna give me 50 grams of carbs, and then in the background, Control IQ will continue to use the parameters to try to, to push my blood sugar where it's supposed to be. Um, but it's two separate levels. There's the, what's happening with the food bolus, and then there's what's happening with Control IQ in the background. Um, they are not intertwined. Um, I think that's really, really interesting. And I think that's probably why I like Control IQ more, because I, if I have to do bolus, if I need a bolus for carbs, um, I'm going to need that bolus for the carbs. I don't always need all of it. You know, I mean, like I understand that. Um, but my basal rate and my boluses, I, it's not very often throughout the day where they really can replace one another. Um, it's usually that I need both. And every now and then I do need to um, reduce one based on the other and blah, blah, blah. It's eight minutes. I feel like this was pretty good. Um, there was a couple of other things before I fell asleep, that's why I wrote this. Um, standard manual correction boluses and auto correction boluses make use of correction factor in determining the bolus amount. So these are just kind of some, some facts. Um, the correction boluses, whether it be one that you input or whether or not um, Control IQ is gonna give you, they both use correction factor in determining the bolus amount. Only correction boluses use the predicted blood glucose. So a correction is going to consider your predicted blood glucose. Um, a food bolus is not going to, um, or a standard bolus is not going to. Um, you can see the entire explanation of the bolus delivery under view calculations. So if you're ever dying to know, um, I'll just put this in. So let's just say I'm putting in this bolus. Not that I would ever eat 50 grams of carbs <laughs> at once. I can go down here to view calculations and it's all in there. And it is fascinating. Um, there's all this right there. Okay. Um, and the last thing is my own personal and very opinionated observation. Okay, I'll add this. There is not a ton of variance between the suggested boluses versus those with current BG. Um, so when I, so when I go to give it updated information, most of my boluses are not much different than what control IQ was suggesting anyway. There, I mean, there could be like a half unit, uh, difference. There could even be a one unit difference, but in general, it's not a three or four unit difference. Um, in general, that does not mean that there aren't times and there are times where it tells me I need zero but I know I need insulin because I'm eating ho-hos, you know, or something like that. And so I'll override it and I'll do five units. Um, but in general, if I'm not doing anything crazy that it doesn't know about, what it's suggesting is not far off from what it gives me when I'm giving it updated information. 
Um, to me, this is an indicator of an overall smart algorithm that acknowledges your need for insulin. And that was a very opinionated way to end something that had nobody asked. <laughs> so that's, anyway, okay, that's it. I hope you guys have a great day and thanks for watching. Bye.